So in the meantime, let's look at the player card I made. So this is a matchup with K Paso Key against JTZ. It's going to be a human mirror. Um, both their MMRs are fluctuating in the 1700s right now. JTZ's played a lot more games this season. And it's possible he's better, but I actually gave a slight favorite to K Paso Aki. Yeah, we'll look at this again after the game, and we'll just jump into the game that's going right now. So, we have our first map on Autumn Leaves. At the bottom left, we have K Paso Aki in the green. And at the top right, our orange human player is JTZ. I am not sure if I've played JTZ before myself, but I have played K Paso Aki. And he can definitely take some good uh, some games from good players. So we might be in for quite a close match, even though currently K Paso's record is uh, I mean, his win record's better, but his MMR is slightly lower and he's played less games this season. I still think he might be a slight favorite here, but we shall see what happens. Uh, the second farm from JTZ seems slightly early. I'm sure it doesn't matter much, but yeah, otherwise looks pretty standard. Um, Oftentimes in Human Mirror, there will be an emphasis on getting your base blocked so that water elementals do not get inside. Because water elementals pose a big problem against peasants once uh, the level 3 Archmage comes to harass. So we do see a base block from K Paso. JTZ on the other side. On the other hand, currently has an open base here, but it can easy, easily be blocked whenever he wants with a farm. Uh, and this spot here, in order for an Archmage to summon Water Elemental on this side, you'd have to tuck himself in here, and that could easily be surrounded. Are under so, not a bad design. However, that involves this side getting blocked at some point. Otherwise, of course, the Archmage can just walk right in. And they are both going with the, I believe, pretty standard green camp here with the trolls and the wolf. We see a ring for JTZ and a circuit for K Paso. Definitely much more beneficial for K Paso Aki. You really want. A little bit of extra damage, stats, etc. when you can get it. A, player's forces a ring is happened. a lot less important unless there happens to be hero focus, but generally there won't be hero focus in this matchup until there's like a lot of breakers. So until then, Circa gets a lot bigger advantage. JTZ's uh, scout footman actually took quite a bit of damage. Kipazos also took a little bit. And they're just kind of seeing what their creep routes are. There is a bit of a deviation here. We see K Paso going directly for the gold mine after the first creep. Whereas JTZ went for the small green and is possibly looking to harass now. K Paso Key is, however, not actually expanding. It was just getting the XP. So he has an XP advantage right now. But. Yeah, it looks like the footman and water elemental count is also in Kepaso Key's favor. So with proper micro here, we should see our green human player get slightly ahead. It does look fairly even so far. I mean, it's it's really hard to tell because nothing actually dies. They all just run back at weak health. Yeah, I do think slight advantage for Kepaso here. Although JTZ does have enough mana for another water ellie. They both trade XP on one water ellie. I think it's time for Gabazo to just 
pull back that last footman. Maybe get some extra damage with his Ellie and his hero. A player's forces we are see a attack. shop from both sides. Pretty similar timing. And a tower from both sides. Also pretty similar timing. Now, will JTZ kind of go into the base at all to try to do anything? I don't think he'll accomplish anything, but... Okay, so it's look like they're just going to chase each other around for a bit. And then probably both just back off and heal. Ah, uh, standard, standard human versus human. Just do a bunch of damage, not actually kill anything, and then heal up. Players' forces are under attack. So it looks like JTZ took a camp that actually did a lot of damage to his units and Cape Hosso managed to steal some creeps here. Which is greatly in favor of Cape Hosso key here and with this water alley count and healthy footmen he should be pushing into the base and JTZ is going to have to like camp in the back. This could be very nice for a green human player. And yeah, I'm both casting the game and I do play in the league as well. I have already played my match for this week though. A little bit of Miss Micro getting a footman caught. Uh, it would have really been nice to send maybe the Water Ellie to start canceling all these regening footmen, but he's opting to just back off here. Maybe he was afraid because there was a Mountain King out already. A player's force yeah, otherwise it looks pretty similar from both sides. We see some priests coming out, some uh, adept training. And we have an engagement in the center. Which... Uh, JTZ does have defend against the Water Ellies. So he might be slightly favored here. And he pops the Roar Scroll, so definitely favored now. But I think Cape also did... Uh, was a little bit stronger at the start of the fight, so it's still kind of even-ish, but we definitely do see JTZ starting to edge out in footman count. The question is going to be what pickoffs they can get afterwards, as uh, the MK's mana is now starting to drop low. Looks like a water elemental is going to get picked off. Priest hanging in the back, another water alley going to get picked off. Uh, the spell finally coming out, and we do see a level 2, so uh, our orange human JTZ definitely took a slight advantage there. Especially with this last bolt pickoff on a priest. But it's definitely not, you know, a, a, lose a, a losing situation. Cape also can definitely come back. It'll just depend on how the creeping and micro in the future fights goes. Does need to be a little careful here because you really don't want to feed these uh, militia. I get what he's doing though, he wants to uh, he wants to make sure JTZ is not getting some advantage in the center. But I don't think he can creep too well himself either because he only has one breaker at this point. Slight food advantage. For JTZ, but honestly, it's just because Kipaso, our green human, has not spent his gold as much yet. He still has 600, whereas JTZ is at like 50. 
a very nice pickup here. Getting the center camp is always huge. Picks up the mana stone. Very good for the Mountain King. I forget, did I? I think I unmuted myself, right? Hopefully I unmuted myself because I hope I wasn't done. Yeah, anyways. Manastone, very good. Okay, Paso going for an expo here. Which could be quite awkward with the level disadvantage. We see a level 3 MK already against an MK that's not even level 2 yet. So JTZ seems to be in a comfortable position right now. He has one extra breaker. He does lose a priest right away though and level 2 picked up finally. But a priest going down for Kepasso as well. And with this mana stone being used, there will be a lot more priests getting bolt focused. Park Mage needs to be careful. Priest dropping weak. One more gets picked off, but one more also picked off on GTZ side. Standard human things, just kill all the casters and then the. And the breakers just kind of sap the mana of everything left. So this is nearing a key moment. If Cape also manages to somehow defend this well enough with Militia, he could easily take an economic advantage quite quickly here. And it is currently a tier 2 versus tier 2 fight as well. So this economic advantage would be quite game winning if it does in fact happen. But losing these peasants is definitely a problem. And it's starting to slip away from Kepaso now. He does still have quite a lot of gold. But he, he just needs time to get his units out at this point. Honestly, what I would like to see is for something sent to the merc camp that was cleared and then just pick up all the mercenaries for Kepaso because he can afford it right now. He has the food, he has the gold, uh, there's enough wood. And that could actually defend this push. Obviously the merc camp is subpar units and they give a lot of XP. But with picking up all four of them as well as his next couple units coming out from the sanctum, I do think he would be able to hold this. But yeah, he does need to get something over there if he wants that to happen. Yeah, his breakers are a bit weak here. So it's, it's definitely going to be rough. His MK is still not level 3. However, he does have a lot of mana left. So if he manages to get a couple pickoffs right away and reach level 3, this MK and uh, all the mana he has could be quite strong. He is getting sapped, his mana feed back a bit in these breakers. Now he needs to be careful because his health pool is low too. But JTZ's MK, also low on mana, won't be able to focus as well as you'd like until the Brilliance Aura kicks in a little bit more. And Kepaso is managing to start catching back up in food, although I think some of it's in production. These, actually, these next two breakers actually might be enough to really hold this though. And all he needs is like one more unit kill I believe to get level 3. And then once that level 3 MK comes out for Kepaso and he can start just bolting priests, he might take a big advantage here. Nice micro pulling back the priest a bit and the focus breaker. He is possibly going to lose this priest, but he gets a bolt on the opposing MK, trains its mana, loses another of his breakers. However, he is getting an economic advantage now, and with this water alley pickup, he does reach level 3. And now, Kepaso is really starting to be in a good position. However, in the meantime, JTZ did expand himself rather than 
committing like an all-in on this expo and he has 1-1 one, one upgrades so JTZ still has a level advantage has an upgrade advantage uh, both still stay in tier 2 Okay, Paso is probably a little worse off in a lot worse off in wood economy but food count is pretty similar so depending how their fight goes this could just swing in Kipaso's favor, but JTZ is definitely a bit ahead right now. See one Priest getting picked off, but Breaker also getting focused down a bit. They're trying to keep their MK back so they don't get bolt focused and lose all their mana to feedback. See some nice dispels and focus fire. Another Water Ellie picked up. Steals the Tome. Why not? Yeah, JTZ actually got a Sobi mask, which is uh, very strong. We'll be able to keep that Mountain King topped off in mana with alongside the Brilliance Aura. Okay, we do have Control Magic coming out from JTZ. Stealing the water alley. And this MK gets focused down quickly. That's all it takes is one little misposition with the MK and the bolt focus and breakers. And Kipaso is suddenly in a bad spot. He will have to tavern rebuy, but not having mana on his MK is going to be a big problem. And I think JTZ is taking a huge advantage here now. It's going to be really tough for our green human to defend this. Uh, he didn't actually manage to rebuy. Maybe he queued up in the altar now? He does. So he's hoping he can somehow defend with just this. And I somewhat understand because tavern rebuying isn't really going to do much when the MK has no mana. But it is definitely going to be extremely tough. He needs to have really good micro and he needs JTZ to probably slip up a bit. The JTZ also has upgrade advantage 2-1 against 1-0. The only advantage Cape also has right now is a level 5 Archmage. But without an MK here, it just doesn't matter as much. He did go for level 3 water ellies as well. We might see some control magic on that whenever they drop low health. Yeah, these units are... Uh, these units are struggling. Zeppelin. There's a TZ to pick up any weak units. Almost level 5 himself. Does now in fact reach it by killing the peasant. Yeah, this counter expo was actually really good because the fight was starting to be quite close here at the expo earlier. So it was nice for JTZ to uh, not really take a step back, but just make sure he fights on equal footing in the long run by setting up his own counter expansion rather than committing to an all-in that can be potentially defended by Militia. Yeah, right here we see a lot of breakers just getting picked off by K-Paso, uh, of K-Paso's army. His MK is back, however it is quite tough with this choke point to really reach any of the priests. He does manage to get a couple here, one bolt and another going down. Very nice, however his breaker count is falling much quicker. He is down 8 food currently. JTZ also has a gold advantage. A couple breakers picking off peasants in the meantime as well. Level 5 MK with basically full mana. Those bolts are going to be scary. You should probably just start tossing some of those out on like this MK here. Like any time. 
Okay. Yeah, I think whenever he decides to bolt this MK, it's just going to drop to like 100 health or potentially die. And then MK is going to have a tough time to do anything. You see a little bit of interesting play with JTZ pulling his heroes back to the peasant line rather than fighting. I would like to see him throw out more of these bolts. I feel like it's kind of a waste to just be sitting on full mana. But... I don't know. Interesting. He does still have the advantage. He has 2-2 now against 1-1 one, one upgrades. And then 5-5 five, five against 5-3. Five, Higher breaker count. Still not using his MK mana though. I'm not really sure why. Because he's he's definitely still here and playing. So I'm surprised he's not just throwing out some bolts. I don't believe there's any particular reason to not do so. And we actually see knights finally coming out for JTZ. And a paladin. He managed to tech tier 3 in the meantime. And that should be securing it. These 2-2 two -two knights, once they also have like sundering blades, will just uh, mow through the frontline breakers. And I don't think there's much Kipaso can really do at this point. Even with uh, JTZ's MK. Not really doing much with his mana. Okay, finally gets a bolt. And the MK does drop. Level 6 Archmage. And JTZ takes the victory. That was actually a really close game though. There was a moment where... If uh, JTZ hadn't... Counter Expoed? He may have not been able to break Kipaso's Expo either and... Could have lost there, but he did decide to counter expo. Got up. Uh, got up his own economy and was able to hold his advantage at that point. I think the big thing is just uh, JTZ being able to take both the middle camps and getting a level advantage as well. Let's see. Pop this player card up again, real quick. Might as well in the break. So I was mentioning earlier, I did give this slight favorite to Kpaso, mostly because I feel like his human mirror might be pretty strong. But JTZ definitely has played more games and has a slight, slightly better MMR. And we saw in the first game he did actually take the win. So definitely a close match though. We'll see how the next one goes. And our second map is a last refuge. Bottom left, we have our orange human player, k Aki. And top right, our blue human player, JTZ. I'm sure they will both just play standard. They do have proper altar position towards the creeps. The biggest question on this map is, are they going to go for the Merc camp right away? Are they going to expand? Or are they going to do things like just the small creep while pulling this to buy the Shadow Priest? There's definitely a few options here. Um, I think generally they're either going to be creeping the green or the Merc camp first. But the question is, do they expand after? And then do some sort of hit and run, or both cancel each other's expos, or does one player defend their expo? And yeah, they, they definitely will be both looking to buy a Shadow Priest at some point. So far, pretty standard opening though. Nothing new here for human players. They will oftentimes do this same build against every race, really, unless they opt for a different hero, but most commonly they will continue playing Archmage. Okay, we see First Footman on both sides going out towards the Merc camp. 
So I am assuming both sides will also likely pull into either creeping it or at least buying the Shadow Priest. Yeah, that, that's the big question. Uh, it looks like Kebaso is going for the creep of it. However, he screwed up a bit with his attack. militia and JTZ also creeping it right away. So they're going to target the, the High Priest, followed by probably the small golem and then the big golem clear it pretty quickly gets the shadow priest and what items will we have this time wealth loss not very good at all and storm wind definitely very good so huge advantage from the start for Kepaso um, honestly, our items can be hard to overcome in certain instances, and this may be one of those instances. The Devotion Aura right from the start, definitely extremely powerful. You see a farm from both sides, as well as both going for the green camp next. A Ring of Protection against a Claw. Okay, well, Kepaso definitely has a big advantage. He does need to be a little careful with his peasant here though. He really would like to not lose it. And he should be able to defend it here, especially with a Shadow Priest heal, although he isn't snared on his priest. Okay. And does he... Does he pick it off? <laughs> For health, dude. Oh no. Honestly, still fine. That footman is still, you know, basically decommissioned and will have to be healed before it can do anything. Might just be picked off if there's a harass as well. Okay, and they do go for just the gold mine after. Now, will they both expo? I think they will on this map. And it looks like they're leaving their peasants to do so. Yeah, they neither side is teched as well. So we will see both Expo and then both will also meet up in the middle and it'll be just a sort of stalemate where they're both trying to pick off as much as they can and if one side manages to get an advantage, they can uh, then go and cancel the Expo as well. JTZ with a slight mistake here, not using all his peasants to build yet. And one thing that sometimes players do here is things like this, where they just target the expo, hoping to cancel it. I'm not sure if he will get it. It's really close. He needs to get this water early. Uh, getting the water early may have actually helped enough. And I don't think he even got it in the end, because it. I believe it may have expired. Maybe the Berserker killed it. Big pick off killing the expo however his own expo may also be cancelled because he uh, started power building it so late not to mention his army is definitely weaker he has one footman one berserker one shadow priest against five footmen plus a berserker and shadow priest okay also also level four and level two aura is huge here he does get his expo finished However, his army is not strong enough, even with militia support here. So Kepaso is currently in a big adv advantageous position. However, a nice uh, nice little footman harass there. Uh, and yeah, as long as Kepaso micros well enough, ideally to deny level 4 from the opposing Archmage, he should be able to get quite a bit of damage here. Okay, he decides to call Militia for this footman. Not a bad call. I think he also could have tried just slapping it with these peasants. Like their 5 to 6 damage would eventually kill this 34 health fo footman. But it's not bad to do that either. And JTZ is definitely getting a bit weak. At some point he's going to have to back off and just heal with a regen scroll. And Kepaso is doing a nice job with splitting his footmen while distracting with his Archmage and Water Elise. 
JTZ not able to reach his expansion to defend it properly and has to wait for the Arcane Vault now. Uh, tech is, I feel a little slow from both sides. Uh, Kepasos especially, but that's because he had his expo cancelled and had to spend uh, another big chunk of wood to get a new one building. So we do see an arcane vault. Good positioning to block off the arcane tower a bit. And now JTZ is going to be making a last stand here to secure his expansion and he might be able to get it i think i think he actually has enough now after using the regen scroll so cape also might have to back off here however he didn't actually call three of these militia into militia form so his army is a bit weaker than it could have been or or did he do that? he might have done that purposely to try to repair instead but yeah cape also's items definitely paying off here reaches level five but otherwise the army is still somewhat equal. Um, Kipaso definitely has a gold advantage through getting his expansion up sooner and if he can continue to macro properly spend his gold on these mercenaries he should start to take a real advantage here. His tech is late so if he wants anything else it's going to just have to be footman for now. But with the level 5 Archmage, Claw, Circlet, Stormwind, he's in a decent position to continue holding his advantage. And I'm curious if we shall see a different second hero at all, or if it will still just be the Mountain King. I think Panda can be pretty good here for multiple reasons. Uh, one is he's better at sieging than an MK. Two, you may very well have um, mass teleport soon and hit and runs with mass teleport and panda can be very strong. You can kill peasants, you can kill farms. All very effective with the panda. Of course MK, always a strong contender and I wouldn't be surprised to see an MK as well. Yeah, Kepaso, I mean, he does have a big chunk of gold, but I think it's just because he both doesn't want to break 50 yet, and he wants to make sure he's making good units rather than just more footmen. He did pick up mercenaries, of course, to reach 50, but he doesn't really want to produce more footmen, per se. Okay, we see JTZ starting to set up his defense. Our orange human player going in, going to likely get this cancel or maybe some harass on the peasants. Looks like he's just going to try to fight off JTZ with his uh, ranged army and his um, level 3 water elementals from level 5. And yeah, this, this hero advantage is going to be huge here. These water elementals are extremely tough to take down, and they do a ton of damage in return. Berserker getting picked off, however, followed by the Golem. Very nice for JTZ. He is losing a couple mercs himself. But the problem is these water ellies. There's just no real counter to them yet. He does have some abolish, but it requires a lot of mana to abolish down a max level water element. Okay, we see the peasants dropping, the town hall also dropping quite a lot. MK does come out from both sides rather than something like a panda. And I know Kepaso is going tier 3 already as well. Reaches level 6. However, JTZ finally reached level 5 of his own, but his MK gets focused. And that MK dropping, as well as this expansion now being quite exposed against Kepaso's army, might be the end for JTZ here. He does have a Sanctum coming up, but he is still sticking on tier 2. And soon the level advantage and the tech advantage, as well as even the economy advantage, is just going to be too overwhelming for him to 
quite off. We do see double Sanctum rather than double Barracks though. He definitely could have gone double Barracks and like tons of Knights if he had wanted. But I think this is still fine. Mixing in a few Knights here and there but still having a bunch of Breakers and Priests. As well as Fragmentation Mortars eventually. Should see a third hero Paladin. Yeah. JTZ decides to call it, realizes he can't really uh, recuperate from the early losses. Uh, game 1 went to JTZ, so the score is 1-1 one, one right now. That game, K Paso definitely had an item advantage right from the start, and he utilized it well by you know, both sides having to take a fight early by uh, through expansion. And being able to have Stormwind plus Claws against Ring plus um, uh, Quell the Loss is definitely advantageous to the Stormwind player. There we go. Game three, score one to one. And we get a big map that could result in a very, very long game unless one side ends up getting a big advantage early. This can oftentimes end up with even two expansions against two expansions. So we'll see what they go for. Fairly certain it's going to be standard openings. Top left, we got our purple human player, k Aki. And at the bottom right, we have our pink human player, JTZ. Um, I'm sorry, I might actually put up a little scorecard right now because not much is happening at this moment in the game. That should be good enough. And it also matches up to their positioning. K Paso top left. JTZ bottom right. JTZ likes to do this sort of base build where he has all his farms on his barrack side and then an opening on his altar side. K Paso also doing the same on this map, but previously K Paso was doing a full block off to make sure. Uh, water elementals couldn't get inside. We do see an early uh, scout tower coming out. So maybe preparing for the future level 3 harass that will likely come to either his main base or his expo. And I do assume this arcane tower means he will likely expand and he will likely also head across the map to JTZ side and try to cancel his expo while having, you know, defense on his own side. I'm sure JTZ will also set up an arcane tower, but we do see a difference here actually. He went Mountain King. Okay. A player's forces are under I mean of course Mountain King very powerful. You oftentimes will still see a Archmage second, but sometimes also Blood Mage second can be strong with Siphon. Generally, you want an Archmage still though, because you want Aura. And then what you do is you get like potentially Aura first and then like Blizzard for uh, our pink human side a player's with the MK first. Attack. Yeah, we do see k Paso going for his expo as expected, and JTZ doing the same. And like I said, I believe with the early arcane tower, he will likely also try to set up an early arcane tower here. And then his goal will be more of just trying to stay on the 
offensive while he has towers to defend. A player's forces are under attack. If possible. We do see an uh, scout tower from JTZ as well. Still not upgrading though. But we shall see where they decide to go with this. MK level 3 will definitely attempt to be aggressive. Uh, level 2 Bolt can quickly pick off either Peasants, uh, low health Mercs like the Shadow Priest, even high health Mercs if he gets 2 Bolts off. He does go for a Staff of Telly. He has... I mean... I guess if you're going to get these items, you definitely prefer that you have an MK for them. So they're not terrible. And he actually goes for Clap. Um, I believe clap level 2 as well, rather than clap level 1. So clap is definitely strong in the early game, and Kepaso has to be extremely careful here because he will quickly lose all of his units if he ends up taking too many of those claps. We do see the footman going down, Shadow Priest also going down, and the Berserker. And this is, this is the scary part about that level 3 MK. Even without Bolt, Clap can put in a lot of work. He does deny his own Shadow Priest. Very nice move. He will need an Arcane Vault soon. Preferably somewhere here. Because this MK is going to need to heal. That's the one advantage Kepaso still has is uh, Hero Health Pool. And the items also slightly favoring Kepaso. Because he has a greater healing, which means his Archmage can stay for a long time and tank. Whereas the MK only has an Invuln, which isn't particularly good in this sort of situation. It'll be much use, uh, much more useful later once there is a high Breaker count. But we see some nice micro from JTZ here, pulling out his weak footman and trying to do a little bit of harassing. Kepaso's army quite weak at this moment. He really does not have much. I don't think he will pick up Merc. We might actually see a Merc push from JTZ here on the expo. If there... Okay, there isn't actually anything to purchase yet. The Berserker's not off cooldown yet. But once these Berserkers come off cooldown, it is very possible to see one side try to purchase both. Maybe send a footman to the opponent's side, pick them both up, and then do some economy harass. But yeah, this MK getting pretty weak. He does finally set up his arcane vault a bit late. I would have liked to see it probably about finished by now. Very nice block by k So gets that footman. And he's looking to keep up a little bit of pressure. I don't think he can do too much though, because he just does not have the unit count to back it up. And yeah, he does He does indeed pull back. Uh, huge level advantage from JTZ. It came at the cost of a lot of health and mana on his MK, but the XP advantage is generally better. Even if you have to purchase extra healing items, mana items. Ooh, and we do see Kepaso. He he was going for the Merc Steel. However, JTZ wisely already took the Berserker when it had come off cooldown about what was that like 15 seconds ago or something? But Kepaso does manage to steal the ogre and the mud golem. Muddy coming in. And Muddy can be extremely scary. Slow is really powerful in these early stages. This could be a nice little harass, but we will likely see a couple militia pulled to deal with it, and it shouldn't be that much of a problem, especially with a second tower finishing. Oh, he actually sends the Ogre Mauler. That's, that's a good decision too. And then afterwards, this Ogre Mauler, once it joins this fight, two Muddies, two Ogres, that can be quite scary. Uh, the clap will not be as effective on it. It will still be quite effective against these footmen, but unaffected against muddies, less effective against the high health ogre mauler. And 
until he gets, you know, quite a few claps off. We might actually see a bolt here. I'm pretty sure he gets bolt and not bash, but not positive. I think bash plus uh, clap is generally just kind of weird. But I'm not sure if we've seen a bolt. Okay, he does go for bolt. Looking to surround, and I believe he yeah, has the surround, but there is greater heal potion. He gets out. His um, Ogre Maul is probably going to die here. And if he pulls any more units nearby, there's going to be one more bolt to use for him. Gets a couple of abolishes, and now at the level 5 MK, we will likely actually see level 3 bolt rather than level 3 clap, I assume. But he could still go for a level 3 clap. Depend I guess he might also wait to see if he's going to be facing lots of breakers or if Kepasa is going to knights. Kepasa is indeed going to knights. A player's forces are under attack. However, he does do the double sanctum again rather than a single sanctum. I do think sometimes with knights they go single sanctum, you know, single workshop, and then one or two barracks. Probably two barracks, especially because you need animal war training and sundering blades upgrades as well. But he actually does a little different here by doing double sanctum, emphasizing a little more on having a decent breaker count and casters as well. Uh, let's see, upgrades queued. No upgrades from Kepaso's side yet. His wood is a little bit low, but so is JTZ's. And we see a Zeppelin harass coming in. He did actually go for Blood Mage second rather than Archmage, prioritizing Siphon instead of Brilliant Sorrow, which will likely also have an emphasis on um, a little less casters and a little more non casters because <laughs> you really need brilliance aura if you do go casters so for k Paso's side he might actually want to mix in a couple sorceress at some point but it also depends how many breakers jtz decides to make tp forced as the zeppelin did drop too low and ended up dying level four two against five two Always scary to face a level 5 MK. And yeah, we do see knights coming out. And this is why I'm thinking uh, Kepaso might be able to go like retrain Blizzard at some point. Uh, make sure he grabs Clap rather than bash this game. And then mix in a couple sorceress, which he is. He is like, getting a sorceress right now. And I do think that's the right type of solution against this. Because with Blood Mage and no Brilliance Aura, it's much more likely the human uh, player doing that is going to do things like Knights. And with just a bunch of Knights and very little, if any, Breakers, you can have quite a bit of trouble still against Casters and Spell Damage. And that, that is what Kepaso is going for. I mean, I... I I assume he will try to retrain to Blizzard if he finds the opportunity to and gold to, because that can definitely be very powerful against Knights. I guess Water Elementals still would also be pretty powerful. Maybe, maybe Water Ellies are still a little better because of how risky Blizzard can be against like a level 3 Bolt from a level 5 MK. So he doesn't necessarily have to retrain. But I do know Blizzard can be pretty powerful, especially when everything is slowed from the sorceress he's mixing in. A player's forces are under attack. Yeah, we do see level 3 for the Blood Mage already, so now he's going to focus on soloing up the Paladin. You really want at least level 2, just so you have Divine Shield to protect him. And of course, level 3 is always a key moment on basically every hero. But yeah, getting that Divine Shield, definitely very powerful. 
still only initiate for Cape Osso. So we won't see dispels coming out here. However, he doesn't really need to dispel much either. And I do think Cape Osso has a slight army advantage, but it's really hard to tell because of how effective Clap can be. And he probably needs like one heal scroll to really counteract this. This clap is going to hurt if he manages to get the mana for it. If he can sap the mana with feedback though. Yeah, he saps the mana with feedback. Now he needs some uh, passed over mana. Gets a bolt off nicely. It should TP though before he gets counter bolted and killed. Okay, he does get his TP off. And I think that actually was... I don't really want to say favored for either side. I think it's pretty even. Yeah, we do see knights, even while slowed, are still pretty scary for the mostly breaker army. A player's forces are under but with tier three, he may actually be able to even go polymorph. There is a depth training on these priests. But he needs to start getting enough mana on his blood mage to actually fill up the priest mana. Because currently the priest is losing all his mana to just healing random stuff and like poison. And he's going for a second expansion here. Um, I guess this is probably the call because of his gold count and food count. So we will likely see second expansion as well as like two heal scrolls and an invuln purchased or at least one heal scroll. Okay, he is going for the items. What do we see? Heal scroll invuln, pass the invuln to something maybe or just double heal scroll. Okay, double heal scroll. Okay, Paso on the other hand does not actually have a heal scroll and it is something he desperately needs. Even though he has a high breaker count and a level 3 MK, a blood mage can always quickly get up this level 5 MK's mana, so you need a heal scroll to counteract the clap damage. Otherwise k is not in a bad spot, however this engagement is definitely pretty awkward he needs his Paladin to get in quickly, and it's only a level 2 Paladin so far. Has to have some slows coming out. Uh, he does not actually have Master Training for Sorceress coming yet. And the creeps get engaged here. A little bit of slow being wasted on them as well. Kinda awkward. 2-1 Knights against 1-1 one, one Breakers. With a second armor upgrade on the way. Are under is under this mortar just, you know, playing with fire here. And this expo is definitely going to drop. But I think JTZ will also take the fight, most likely. And his mortars are putting in work. These casters do have to watch out for that. He will need a heal scroll here, but he never actually managed to buy one yet. And the, mites, the knights just might be too much for him here. Priest getting a little exposed. His mortar manages to retreat in the back. Uh, JTZ's knights also dropping quite low, but just not enough to finish them off. He needs either retrain Blizzard or start pumping out these water alleys. Because there's actually not much for like dispel or anything like that to counteract water release. So this Archmage needs to start. Okay, he does get one out now. That will help quite a bit, but I'm not sure if there's actually enough damage anymore to kill these knights. The slow is putting in work, but just just too much damage coming out from them alongside uh, just their high normal damage and sundering blades and these breakers. And Kepaso calls it JTZ with the 2-1 victory. Definitely a very close series. I think all three games were pretty close at a lot of points. And it definitely could have gone either way. 
but JTZ takes it in the end. 2-1. And a pretty nice human series overall. No like really long drawn out games. We got to see a little bit of uh, deviation in the last game with an MK rather than an Archmage first as well. 